Well, good evening, private practice success community, and welcome to the Minion Show. Yes, we've got some craziness tonight, and it's only just after nine o'clock. It's not even crazy hour as yet. What I want to do as we wait for people to hop on is share this live to be so surprised when they log on and they see this. All right. Come, my internet just has to work with me. Hey, Brooklyn, how are you? Welcome to the Minion Show tonight, not the Private Practice Success Show. <laughs> can you see my little minions, or is it just me that can see this and I'm being really silly? <laughs> uh, if you've got three kids, two of whom is still very young and big Minion fans, that this then this is what you need to do. So I will take it off, but we'll just keep it on for fun as we get started and we wait for more people. Brooklyn says you can see it, very cute. Excellent, excellent. Oh golly, what is going on with my internet? That looks a bit better. Let me share this in, everybody's not in bed already. So of course this is part of our 90 day vlog challenge and today is officially vlog and hence day number 70. Um, it's very interesting when I mastermind group which is my 12 month close group for mastermind um, practice owners it's owners and they attend four retreats a year. <laughs> it feels so funny speaking about such serious stuff when you look like this the challenge, this challenge is one in a minion. Oh, I love that. You speak my language. You're my kind of person. Brooklyn, can you believe it? It, It is just going around and around in circles, my little thing on my computer. Not sure what's going on. Um, but we'll give it another couple of seconds. Anyway, so they do four retreats here and the first retreat was in Sydney. January, February, it was like end of March. And during that retreat, I actually set this 90 day challenge. And our second retreat is this weekend. So it's gonna be so, the fact that we've stuck to it, um, really reflect on our wins and you know how it has helped us personally, but also in our business. So what I'm gonna do is, how to just take this off so do we can make some eye contact there I am the real me I'm still not able to share this in my groups don't know why um, it's an internet issue but I'll just share the recording with them in that case all right anyhow so I'm really looking forward to meeting up with them this weekend I'm actually getting them tomorrow night hey Fern thanks for joining me Fern you've just missed my minions Okay, I've just taken them off. Hey, Kate, thanks for joining. Those that are joining now missed all of the fun, and I promise I don't have any alcohol here. I just have like a glass of water. So Brooklyn and I was having a lot of minion fun, so after this, you'll have to go and watch the first couple, <laughs> the first minute and a, a minute and a half or so of the recording. Anyhow, hey, Michelle, thanks for joining. So, I'm, I'm meeting with all of them again this weekend and you know as part of this weekend and as part of reflecting on the 90 day vlog challenge we're gonna look at the wins of it and you know one of them have actually already <laughs> hi Michelle emailed me during the week on Tuesday I think it was just to say, Gerda, thank you so much for pushing me outside of my comfort zone and making me do this because of you know all these um, things that has come about as a result. And it was just so great, and that is music to my ears. And we're gonna formally do that this weekend and really quantify uh, the results of having done this. Um, and some of those results will be related to the business side of things in terms of you know KPIs and outcomes and money side of things and then of course and almost more importantly there's gonna be stuff related to our own professional development and our own personal development in terms of putting ourselves out there um, you know and that is I think a lot of the times the biggest shifts that occur in the way that 
um, we learn things about ourselves, um, things that we never knew that we are capable of, things that we never knew that we could do, things that we never knew that we would actually love and enjoy uh, should we do it. So I really want to encourage you tonight to think about what it is that you've learned about yourself today, this week, this month, over the last two to three months. And also what have you learned about you as an individual, about you as a clinician, about you as a practice owner. So I'll share a bit for you of what I've learned just today. <laughs> First of all, from me as an individual, and, and as I talk you through this, if there's something that you feel comfortable sharing with me and everybody else on here, please type it in the comments box, um, or like and, and, and share and love this um, if it resonates with you, because I would love to hear what it is that you've maybe learned about yourself this week. So today specifically, I learned first and foremost that I can actually uh, get away with only having three hours of sleep a night. Who knew? <laughs> okay, I'm normally one of those people that ideally and optimally I need seven to eight hours. I can do a six if I have to, not long term, but three. Who knew I could do that? Because if you were on last night's vlog, you would know that I said that my husband um, was coming back from South Africa with two of our family members that staying here and they literally arrived home at 1.30 last night and I actually stayed up um, and waited for them obviously wanting to welcome them back home and then of course you know we chit chat they had some coffee catch up that type of thing and only really gone uh, upstairs to my room uh, to bed at around about 2.30 and probably then, you know, first the mind was busy speaking to my husband, asking him how things were for him and then only really shut my eyes to sleep at 3 o'clock. And guess what? The alarm went off at quarter to 6. Time to get up. Time to get the kids to school. Okay? Time to do lunch boxes, do school drop off. Then I had to come back and I had to do some work. And then I had my mastermind Q&A and then I had my hot seat Q&A. And I really surprised myself that I could still function on only three hours of sleep. Now I don't recommend that you do this every night, but it was a really interesting realization that I could actually do it because I've always had this belief that I can't. Um, you know, and, and I think it's very similar for a lot of, of you guys, perhaps that think, you know, I could never do like a daily vlog like Gerda, or I could never, you know, speak live on Gerda. But you know what? Until you've tried it, you don't know whether you can do it or not. And, you know, it's really interesting. One of the um, learnings that um, this person that emailed me earlier in the week shared with me was that um, one of their clients. Um, told them that um, they were like binge watching all the, all the vlogs and catching up and that they could actually see the difference in confidence from the first week to currently and isn't that amazing and it's really the same for me if I look at some of my very first live streams oh golly um, you know sometimes you just want the earth to swallow you in um, you know so many things have gone wrong uh, in terms of technology in terms of losing track of what I was thinking all of that hype of stuff and um, you know it's not that that stuff doesn't happen anymore it's just as like well it doesn't phase me it doesn't stress me out and I can recover from it so much easier but it also happens less often because I'm more confident in doing it and you know what I and I've said this before I have like literally no notes so I'm basically sitting here at my dining room table there's a part of my son's boat uh, with my water <laughs> okay and my laptop and that's it I have no notes everything that I want to talk about is just stuff that's in my head or stuff that's in my heart and I just imagine talking to you guys as if we're having coffee and we're just having a nice conversation which is why I love it when you comment and and interact with me whilst we are on here and and let me know that you can you know relate or maybe share something that's happened for you so that was the first learning that I had today. What else? Well, this might be sound very simple, but I actually went shopping tonight. Um, and that brings me, well, that's actually number three. So number two is the fact that yes, I went shopping tonight. 
and um, I don't go late night shopping for myself personally I'm not one of those people that love shopping hey Monique I'm so glad to see you here so I'm not somebody that that does like a lot of shopping that type of stuff I probably go to the shops twice a year when I go I buy lots of stuff and then I don't have to go again and I'm talking now more about you know clothes that type of thing or shoes um, obviously I do you know um, regular trips to the grocery store because we're lots of people in the house and we've got three kids and that type of thing um, but it was very rare for me to go out tonight and do shopping and the only way the reason I had to go is because it's my mastermind retreat that starts tomorrow okay so I need to get to Brisbane City by two o'clock um, to the hotel to set up all that type of stuff and I have just been leaving everything for so last minute Michelle I know you on here you shouldn't be hearing all this stuff Michelle says yes I don't do notes either surprise myself sometimes by what I say so agree with you Michelle because if you think about it when you are in session and I know I'm going off another tangent now but if when you are in session you don't sit with notes everything is up here so you need to trust that you've got everything up here when you're speaking to people whether you're doing public speaking live um, you know unless of course you're being asked to speak on a specific topic and you don't know that topic well then you're gonna need notes but if it's something that you do every day and that's the stuff that I would talk about it's so easy and it's really about trusting that and I think the times when we do slip up is just because of nerves and some anxiety when our brain starts to run away with us starting to judge us starting to link into that social anxiety talk of hmm I wonder what people are thinking maybe they're thinking Gerda you don't even have makeup on or maybe it's time for you to wash your hair again or you don't even have earrings on or um, <laughs> you know, various things and you really need to nip that in the bud when it happens and just come back to knowing that what you are doing is giving value and you're communicating um, stuff that you're passionate about and you're doing it all because you want to help people um, and there's always going to be a, a people out there that doesn't like what you want to say and that's okay they're not your kind of people um, they may or maybe somebody else's kind of people and they will have somebody else that they will follow and listen to and engage with online and then you're gonna have your people that really can align to what you are saying in your message and it really comes down to the confidence but you uh, do it so well Michelle and as I've said before Michelle always has the smile on her face and she always looks so happy when she's doing her her vlogs um, I don't know how you do it <laughs> Anyhow, um, Monique says, if you know your stuff well, you can talk forever. Exactly, Monique, exactly. So, so true. And, and the great thing is about that, that in this age that we are living in currently, in terms of marketing, um, everybody being online, um, if you know that you know your stuff, and you are willing to step outside of your comfort zone and put yourself out there with the stuff that you know. Um, you know, you can do a lot of education marketing, value added marketing, which is just the way to go at this point in time. Hey Naomi, welcome, thanks for joining me. Yeah, so as I was saying, I've learned this week that I can do stuff last minute, you know, and, and that's not who I am naturally. I'm actually one of those people that do like to do things long in advance. If you ask Frankie, my principal, she'll probably tell you that's not true, Gerda. But that's the interesting thing. I do not like to do things last minute. I definitely prefer to do stuff um, long in advance. If I think back to when I was a student, um, as I was going through undergrad honors, even with masters, um, you know, our masters were very interesting back in South Africa. It was really like a full-time job where you would have to be at the uni by 8.30 in the morning, 9 o'clock lectures start, you've got lunch hour, you've got a small break for morning and afternoon tea, and you're basically in lectures from 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, the whole of your first year. Yes, you did have like uni holidays, but when it was term time or semester time, that was what your life was about and then you still had to see clients either after hours or on weekends and you know what they would do is they would do like a three-day workshop and will tell you that your assessment which is generally an assignment and or exam is due at this time and a lot of times it was at the end of semester 
I would have my stuff finished sometimes a month in advance, my, my assignments, a month in advance. When I had to do um, exams, I would be preparing the moment I hear that there's an exam coming, I would work backwards, plan out when I'm studying. The day before exam, I would just spend an hour revising all the content, and then I would go shopping or I would do something else. And everybody would say, "Good, are you crazy? You need to be, you need to be a studying." And I would say, "No, but I know my work. I don't have to to study because I hate working under pressure." And and that's the way I was always put together, that I like to be organized, I like to be planned, and I like to be ready in advance. However, business doesn't always work like that. So I guess what I've learned is that I have a lot of behavioral flexibility. I think that's the term they use for it. I've got a lot of behavioral flexibility in that although I like to work and behave and act in a certain way, due to my circumstances very often in business because I'm also one of those people that will take on way too much than I should. Um, I will also have an idea and I will run with it if I believe in it and if I have 10 ideas that I believe is good, that's going to be helpful to people, that's going to be good for me, going to be good for my team, I'll run with all 10. Which means I always have like lots of balls in the air and I've got lots of irons in the fire. Um, and as a result, I've had to learn a lot of um, behavioral flexibility in terms of doing stuff last minute. I still don't like it necessarily, and every now and then I find myself judging myself that, geez, Gerda, this should have been done like last week already. I've just come to accept that, you know, you do your best, and even though you do it last minute, as long as it still gets done. Um, that is what is important at the end of the day. So that is the second thing that I've learned today with regards to my behavioral flexibility. Um, the third thing I learned about myself today was do not eat a Subway wrap in the car in the dark whilst driving home from the shops because before you know it, you'll be eating the wrap. Okay, and that's all I'm going to say on that topic was because that's a bit embarrassing, but that happened because I had to multitask and have dinner on the way home so that when I get here, got here, I could speak to you guys. <laughs> Excellent. So those are the three things that I learned about myself today. Have a think about what it is for you and maybe it's not today, maybe it's over the last week, maybe it's over the last month, six months, last 12 months. I think it's really important to spend this time to reflect on it and really acknowledge for yourself how far you've come and give yourself a bit of that pat on the back. And you know, if you haven't learned anything, then hmm, that's a bit of a red flag because you need to learn something. Then you might need to ask yourself, have I just been comfortable? Have I just been doing the same old thing day in and day out? And if so, maybe something needs to change in that department. Alrighty, cool bananas. So I'm gonna love and leave you because I actually still have some work to do um, on my three hours of sleep before I can go to bed. And that is because I've been doing things last minute and my excuse is my husband was away for two weeks. So I've really found and that's another thing that I've learned that to be a single parent is really, really hard work. You really need to step things up. And um, it allowed me to again appreciate the role that my husband plays in both my life, in terms of supporting me to do what I do um, in my business and my travels and all my time that I spent in it, uh, because that's my passion and I just love doing it. And it's given me a renewed appreciation for that. So it's a good thing, it's a good thing, but it did mean that things were heaping up and it has been done a bit last minute, but um, you know, it goes to show that you, again, are able to adjust and adapt and you know have that behavioral um, flexibility and being resourceful um, so it's always uh, purposeful and meaningful whatever is happening to you and it's really about finding out what that is all right so I'm gonna leave you with that I will speak to you again tomorrow for vlog number 77 and I might I might depending on how my day go goes I might do it from the mastermind retreat to give you a 
little bit of a sneak peek into what we're doing tomorrow night, which is probably for me the best part of what we're going to be doing. Brooklyn says, thanks for your time. Lots of smileys from Fern. Thank you, Fernie. All right, guys, thank you so much. Have a great night. And remember, as always, all you need to do is say yes to your very own ultimate level five private practice. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now.